You might be thinking your child's addicted to carbohydrates because all they want to eat is bread, pasta, pan dulce, tortillas, rice, and you're not alone. But here's the surprising thing. There's actually biological reasons why kids prefer carbohydrates. And in today's episode of Messy Bites, I'm going to dive into some of the fascinating science behind why kids prefer carbs, why they're so important for kids' brains and development, how much they need, and yet what parents can do to balance it out and remove some of the stress. Welcome to the Messy Bites Podcast. If your kid could live off of bread, mac and cheese, and potatoes, they would do so. And there's a biological reason why this happens. So welcome to the Messy Bites podcast, where feeding kids gets real, a little chaotic, but you will always find joy in the menu. I'm your host, Marina Chaparro, pediatric registered dietitian, fellow mom in the trenches. And this is a very common concern that I hear from parents is, why does my child only want carbohydrates? All they wanna do, I can serve them the veggies, the protein, and then the bread, and all they'll eat is the bread. So yes, this is a very common concern, a very common phenomenon, but there's actually some science of why this happens that I think it's not often talked about. So let's dive into the science of why this actually happens. There's a couple of reasons, but one of the first ones is Carbs are fast energy for kids, and carbs are really digestible energy. So we got to remember that kids are growing a lot in this phase, and carbohydrates really provide that essential source of energy, of fuel, especially for their brains because they're requiring a lot of growth. And so oftentimes we think of eating patterns similar to what we think should be an adult, but kids have different phases, different eating patterns. So how much carbohydrates do kids need? Well, anywhere from 45 to even 60% of their total energy should be coming from carbohydrates. So to put that into perspective, you know, toddlers could be getting anywhere from 1,000 to 1,400 calories a day. This could be anywhere from 113 grams of carbohydrate a day to more, 165, 180. 80 grams in a day. This is a lot of their total energy needs is going to be coming from carbohydrates. So just to, to remind you, what are carbohydrates? Well, they could be coming from the starches, right? Whether it's the breads, the pastas, the cereal, the tortillas, right? All of those. It could also be coming from fruits, any type of fruit, and also the lactose, so the milk. And when kids and when babies are infants, most of their carbohydrates is actually coming from the lactose in breast milk. So number one reason is it's really important for their kid's brain and rapid growth because they need a lot of energy because they're growing so much. And here's an interesting fact. By age five, a child's brain uses more than twice the glucose of an adult brain per gram of tissue. So really their glucose uptake, the amount of glucose that a brain, a child's brain needs is going to be far superior than that in adults. So we got to think of the basics that carbohydrates are going to be that brain power, that fuel. So we shouldn't be afraid of it, right? Thinking again, we're going to include a balanced approach to the carbohydrates that we're going to include. So that is the reason why kids are craving a lot more carbohydrates to meet up the demand of their brain, of their glucose needs compared to those of adults. So I think it's really important for parents to understand the importance of carbohydrates in kids' brain and bodies. 
Because oftentimes we get these messages of, oh my God, restrict carbs or even go more protein. Protein is what you need. The protein, the protein. I have another episode on protein that I'm going to link here. So yes, protein is important, but actually carbohydrates may play an even bigger role in your brain and your kid's development. So a quick story. For many years, I worked in the pediatric endocrinology department in different children's hospitals here in Miami. And so we would see kids, of course, diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And we would often see, and that's a different, you know, chronic condition, but we would often see when parents would try to restrict carbohydrates in order for them not to give so much insulin, their growth would actually be affected. And interestingly enough, in kids that have um, seizures or neurological conditions like epilepsy, a common treatment or a common way of treating this is to really go on a ketogenic diet. And what some of the studies have found that these kids, because they're restricted so much on the carbohydrates, they don't grow as properly compared to those kids that would have more carbohydrates. So I think this takeaway is very important for parents to keep in mind that carbs are not the enemy. Carbs are going to be essential for your kids' brains. So do not fear them. Realize that they're going to be maybe more attracted to them because of all these reasons that we that we mentioned. But now let's shift gears and say, what can you do about it? And how can you keep it balancing without losing your mind? And another surprising reason why kids prefer carbohydrates is that kids are biologically wired to prefer sweet taste. And this goes back to even an evolutionary trait that in order for humans to survive, we really needed to gravitate towards energy dense food and AKA safe food, which could be the fruit that we would get as gatherers uh, or even breast milk, right? When babies are first born. So that meant it was safe food compared to more bitter foods that could potentially be toxic and harmful. And so this evolutionary trait was essentially how humans survived. So naturally and biologically, kids will prefer sweet taste, even if we think about it from a more real perspective is what's their first food? It's breast milk, which is naturally sweet. And there's been some fascinating studies that yes, kids have an innate um, preference for sweet taste. This doesn't mean that they're never going to eat more bitter tastes like fruits, like veggies. But yes, they do have a harder time accepting veggies because of this same theory. So understanding that I think also puts parents at ease that it's not your child that's quote unquote addicted to the carbs. There's actually some biological science behind this. And there's even some interesting research to say that kids' taste buds are different than those found in adults. And kids need higher concentrations of sweetness to be able to detect that same sweetness compared to adults. So that's why sometimes we worry, why is my kid obsessed with sweets? Well, they're not able to detect the sweetness. They need more of that sweetness because they are not able to detect it in their taste buds compared to when you know, we're teenagers or adults, because as time progresses, we lose some of those, some of that sensitivity. So I think just, I think that's fascinating, but it's also once we understand this research, oh, okay. It's not me that's feeling, it's not my child that is quote unquote doing something wrong. This is actually just science and nature. Another reason is that carbs and starchy foods tends to be easier to chew. And it's also maybe more safe because it provides similar textures. So if you think about pasta, if you think about bread, tortillas, rice, it's really very bland, um, a food that is all white and kids oftentimes, and especially in their, in their toddler years, they might be going through some food neophobia, which I mentioned in other episodes in the past of why this happens. 
but they also resort to kind of having some comfort food and some safe foods that are easier for them to chew. So textures for some kids could be an issue. And they know that a dinner roll is going to be a dinner roll no matter what. And a berry or strawberry, that could be very different. They're very unpredictable. Sometimes it could be sweet. Sometimes it could be sour. So that predictability and that sense of safeness, which again, many younger kids or toddlers are really looking for, they're going to find this comfort in those starchy foods, aka those white foods. So if your kid is gravitating towards those white foods, now you know why. Because they're safe, they're easier to chew, they don't pose a threat, a dinner roll is going to be, again, the same each time around. And another reason we don't often talk about are genetic differences. And yes, we know that some kids genetically are going to be more what we call food responsive than others. Essentially, food responsiveness is is an individual's tendency to respond to external food cues, such as sight, smell, or taste, or palatable foods by feeling the urge to eat. So we know that some kids are just born liking food a little bit more, right? We see babies when they're starting solids and they're just like, "Mm, I love this, or they're doing happy dance. This could be genetic. It's also environmental in some cases. So we also know that how parents react or parental feeding practices could also really play a role in how responsive your child becomes. In other words, we know that parents who tend to control or restrict food inadvertently start to create more food responsiveness in spite or in lack of hunger. Parents Depending on your feeding style and whether or not we're using food as a reward, food as a bribe, food as comfort, or controlling or restricting food, this could even play a role in how responsive your child is. And that's really important because oftentimes we're like, what do I do when we get worried at this age because we worried they're eating too many carbohydrates. And so our natural tendency is going to be to... Let me restrict, let me restrict and say, ay, mijito, you already had a lot. Ay, mijito. And that's exactly what I don't want you to do because doing so could actually affect their responsiveness and even cause them to want that food even more in spite of them not being hungry. All right, so what can you do if this is happening to you, if your child is only wanting that dinner roll or the rice or the potatoes? The first one is, I hope that by now you realize that it's it might not just be picky eating, but again, there could be some biological reasons why this happens. It could be phases, right? There are certain times where kids might need more of that growth and more of that quick energy. So realize that this is... Uh, part of their developmental phase. But I think the most important thing is you want to continue providing consistent meals and snacks and also continue providing that balance. So just because your kid is only preferring the bread, that's not just what you're going to serve, right? Your role as a parent is to decide the what they're going to be, what you're going to provide, and the when. So the breakfast, the lunch, the dinner, and the snacks. So your job is to continue exposing and to continue providing those opportunities for them to see the broccoli, the green beans, the tomatoes, the other maybe starches, the other proteins. And yes, I know it's going to be frustrating because you might you might think that your child's never going to eat them. But again, I still need you to continue providing those balanced meals at breakfast, at lunch and dinner because if they if you fail to do so, then the only thing they're going to learn to eat is pasta. It's pasta. It's pasta. So It's our role to continue exposing and providing those opportunities for maybe more engagement. That said, if you're noticing that your child has a hard time with textures, right, or it's more of 
the the color right this could be an opportunity for your kids to be part of the meal process it's first getting them exposed to different colors to touching to smelling so if you're noticing that this is more so a texture issue then by all means i need you to start getting your child more familiarized or more comfortable with that color, with that texture. And so first working on that on the back end until we can start to desensitize them and they can be feeling more secure and, and safe around those new textures and new colors. All right, it is time for our Messy Bites Real Life Challenge. Every episode, I try to give you some practical advice that you can bring into your home as you're listening. So this week, instead of stressing out about carbs, I want you to lean in on them. I want you to choose one carb your child loves and just serve it with maybe a new food. Could it be a veggie? Could it be a protein or a dip? Realize this is a normal developmental phase and just trying to avoid less pressure and really avoiding the, oh, you've already had too much, why don't you do this? And I mean, Hito, this is all that you're eating because our words really matter. So mom and dad, if you're listening and you think your child's quote unquote obsessed, I want you to realize that it's not a failure on your end, right? It could be biology, it's part of their development, they need more carbohydrates, and it could be just a phase, right? Realize this is part of their development, they will never not eat veggies or proteins. Yes, but it's our job to continue providing those opportunities and we're still deciding the what and the when they decide if and how much. So let's change the mindsets from, oh my God, carbs are the enemy. They can't have so many carbs or you've already eaten too many carbs too. You know, carbs are part of life, right? Bread is part of life. Let's just keep it balanced and having a more positive approach. So I hope this helps. Leave me a comment below. If you have another mom who's struggling with the same issue, send it over to them and make sure you subscribe so you never miss a beat of the Messy Bite podcast. Hasta la próxima. Until next time, guys, always a pleasure.